Good afternoon, grasshoppers. Well done for your start this morning. I'm sorry there was a problem with the maths game. It was really annoying. I kept seeing some of your names that every time I went in, it crashed. But I think some of you did manage to get on, which is really good. Um, but it's very strange. I know some of the other classes have used it and haven't had any problems. So maybe purple mash has a problem or a bug or something today. Um, I might try and set it tomorrow again as another task. So um, you can all have the opportunity to see each other and play a game in the same place. So fingers crossed, we'll make it work. Um, we are going to read Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, chapter 13, The Big Day Arrives. The sun was shining brightly on the morning of the big day, but the ground was still white with snow and the air was very cold. Outside the gates of Wonka's factory, enormous crowds of people had gathered to watch the five, luxury ticket, the five lucky ticket holders going in. The excitement was tremendous. It was just before 10 o'clock. The crowds were pushing and shouting, and policemen with their arms linked were trying to hold them back from the gates. They all linked their arms together to make like a chain, and they were trying to hold the crowds back from the gate. I guess everyone must have been so excited. Right beside the gates, in a small group that was carefully shielded from the crowds by the police, stood five famous children, together with the grown-ups who had come with them. The tall, bony figure of Grandpa Joe could be seen standing quietly among them, and beside him, holding tightly onto his hand, was little Charlie Bucket himself. All of the children, except Charlie, had both their mothers and their fathers with them, and it was a good thing they had, Otherwise, the whole parties, the whole lot of them, might have got out of hand. They were so eager to get going that their parents were having to hold them back. I guess if you were in their position, would you be quite excited too? I would be. They were trying to, they were trying to hold them back by force to prevent them from climbing over the gates. Be patient, cried the fathers. Be still. It's not time yet. It's not 10 o'clock. Just really excited. Behind him, Charlie Bucket could hear the shouts of the people in the crowd as they pushed and fought to get a glimpse of the famous children. There's Violet Beauregard, he heard someone shouting. That's her, all right. I can remember her face from the newspapers. And do you know what? Somebody else shouted back. She's still chewing that dreadful old piece of gum she's had for nearly three weeks, three months. You look at her jaws. They're still working on it. Who's the big fat boy? That's Augustus Gloop. So it is. Enormous, isn't he? Fantastic. Who's the kid with the picture of the Lone Ranger stenciled into his wind cheater? This is, so this is a picture of everyone, I'm guessing. Maybe that's Violet Be Beauregard. There's Charlie. Augustus Gloop. That was a kid that liked watching TV, right? I can't remember what we learned about this one. We'll, we'll find out soon. Okay. That's Mike TV. He's the television fiend. He must be crazy. Look at all those toy pistols he's got hanging all over him. Oh yeah, do you remember he had all the guns on him? They're all his guns. He's like toy, toy guns, the toy pistols. It's a type of gun. The one I want to see is Veruca Salt, shouted another voice in the crowd. She's the girl whose father bought up half a million chocolate bars and then made all the workers in his peanut factory unwrap them, every single one of them, until they found the golden ticket. He gives her anything she wants, absolutely anything. She only has to start screaming for it and she gets it. Dreadful, isn't it? Shocking, I call it. Which one do you think is her? That one, over there on the left, the little girl in the silver mink coat. It's a very expensive type of coat. Which one is Charlie Bucket? Charlie Bucket? He must be that skinny little shrimp standing by the old fellow who looks like a skeleton. Very close to us, just there, see him? Why hasn't he got a coat on in this cold weather? Why do you think he hasn't got a coat on? Because his family can't afford one, I'm guessing. Don't ask me. Maybe he can't afford to buy one. Yeah, right. Goodness me, he must be freezing. Charlie, standing only a few paces away from the speaker, gave Grandpa Joe's hand a squeeze 
and the old man looked down at Charlie and smiled. Somewhere in the distance, a church clock began striking 10. And so like 10 chimes. Very slowly, with a loud creaking of rusty hinges, the great iron gates of the factory began to swing open. The crowd became suddenly silent. The children stopped jumping about. All eyes were fixed upon the gates. Remember, those gates haven't been opened for years and years and years. This is the first time in a long time those gates have opened in the town. There he is! Somebody shouted, that's him! And so it was. I'm guessing that that somebody has just seen Mr. Willy Wonka. We will come back tomorrow for chapter 14 to find out all about Mr. Willy Wonka. Bye, grasshoppers. <laughs>